New world order concepts, totally rotten. World religion appears to be evil. World enslavement, death is preferable. So if a world system is inevitable, the only questions that remain are, why do the promoters of world government demand that we all be slaves? Why the secrecy? Why the lies and the manipulation? And if their intent is not evil, why must they operate in these manners? If it's a good thing, why not let us all in on it? If it is a good thing, a freedom thing, a beneficial thing, wouldn't we all support it? And I believe that most people would support it today if they had not, upon a very basic and cursory investigation, found that most of the promoters of world government are indulging in the most blatant, obvious, and outlandish lies that have ever been perpetrated against any peoples. So we know the answer to those questions, don't we? And so the struggle continues. The idea of the Constitution being restored is truly, ladies and gentlemen, a dream. One I have always been reluctant to release to hopelessness, but reality is a very strong medicine, and the fact still remains that you can achieve nothing from the grave unless you're some big-name martyr whose cause becomes a rallying cry among those who come after. Frankly, I find martyrdom a very poor substitute for education and diplomacy. And there just aren't too many people out there at this time who, even in death, could successfully motivate a rise in the understanding of the people. And no one knows that better than me, for I've been trying for many years to awaken the sheeple and create real people. It just will not happen. Thus we live on, and we do the best we can, day after endless day, you see, there are truths bigger than the individual seeking, and they are worth everything. When you take time to contemplate the future realities, it isn't pretty, no matter what happens. Most people have not thought this thing through far enough. They see the conflict and the possibility of giving their lives for their country. And I can assure you that's scary enough. And that may be why they don't think farther down the line. And most of them don't really believe it anyway because they're not really getting ready. Perhaps they assume they will be killed. Now that's a very dangerous thing to believe. We have to believe that we will live and carry on. Beyond that point, what will life be like? The only thing of which we can be certain is that it will not be what we have expected and it will definitely not be a return to the good old days, whatever and whenever those were, and the future will be a continuous series of encounters with the unknown. That which is most anathematic to most people, that which they fear the most, is change, the unknown. Anything that disturbs the comfortable position which people have entrenched themselves within. So, in a turbulent time of not knowing, the solidity of principles has to serve as an anchor. And that's why I've urged you over and over again not to be loyal to concepts like my country right or wrong, or borders, our people our locations, but to principles and ideals. Hitler's SS were loyal. My country, right or wrong. I hope you understand those concepts. You must be loyal to principles and ideals. They are not contained within borders are within boundaries, are in the person of presidents, are Congress people, nor in places like Washington, D.C. They exist in the minds and in the hearts of people. 